Hey guys, welcome to my shop. I'm Aaron with A. Lee Knives, and tonight I'm gonna to teach you how to make a sand my knife blade. Now listen, I don't have a fancy power hammer or a forge press, so I'm gonna do it with just this hammer right here. So if you have a forge and a hammer, you could do this project at home too. All right, so here's my 1084 and my 15 and 20. We're gonna go ahead and cut six inch lengths. Right there. Hey guys, just a little bit about the materials before we get started here. So I've chosen two materials. I've got the 1084 that I'm gonna use for the core, and I've got the 15 and 20 that I'm gonna use for the outer cladding on the knife. The reason that I've chosen these two materials is because my 1084 is gonna etch really dark. It's got a, a really high carbon amount, and the 15 and 20 is gonna resist my etching process because it's got a much higher content of nickel in it. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me a really striking contrast on the, the side of the knife blade once I cut my bevels in. All right, so there we go. We've got our, got our core material and our two outer claddings. This is a very simple sand my. I'm gonna take a fresh 80 grit belt and I'm just gonna clean the scale off of each one of these pieces here. Knock the burr off. Do you know what I just realized? You're not subscribed to my channel. Why not? It's pretty easy to do. Click the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so that you're notified of when I upload some new content. It's pretty cool stuff. The center piece we need to do both sides. The outer piece I'm only going to do one side. So we've got the outer piece, the inside we cleaned up, the outside we didn't. So the two outer pieces, we have the factory mill scale on the outside and the shiny part's gonna be on the inside. The inner core we cleaned on both sides. Okay, got our steel gloves so that we're not introducing any new oils to our steel. Soak a rag with acetone. Outer cladding, inner core, outer cladding. Everything's nice and clean. I'm gonna put it together just like that so it's sandwiched. We're gonna clamp it in the vise. Here, go ahead and light the forge. Fire. Fire, 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 fire. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and throw my billet in here, and then when I get it up to just about forge welding temperatures, I'll pull it out, and I'm gonna put some borax on it, some nice flux, and then I'll put it back in. Then when we pull it out, the first time we pull it out, we're going to do some light taps on it just to set the welds uh, on both sides. The key here is to get the entire billet up to forge welding temperatures. I think where I've gone wrong in the past is I've brought it out where only one side of it was really hot enough. And then, you know, I got the other side hot and I forge welded both sides separately. But it was the very center section that I had a hard time getting it forge welded. So I'm going to try to get the entire billet completely up to heat. Get the, get the whole thing plucked. I'm gonna pull it out and try to set the weld all the way across in one go.
we go. Four twelve is him. That's it, wrapped up. Got it forged out. We drilled some holes in it so that we now when we cut our bevels, we're gonna have a really neat design between the two dissimilar metals. Um, that way we can really see a lot of um, character come out in the blade from the use of the two different metals with the outer cladding. So we're gonna go ahead and let that anneal this is perlite right here. You can get this at the hardware store. This has really high insulative qualities. So if you put your knife in there, it'll cool down very slowly and it will anneal your steel back to a really soft state so that you can work it, grind it. You're not gonna go through a ton of abrasives. I forged out a, a rectangular billet and I'm gonna cut a knife from that billet now because I don't wanna disrupt the raindrop pattern that I put in there. There's our steel, sand my billet, nice and thin. We're gonna go ahead and clean it up, cut a knife blade out of it, and uh, see what it looks like. A tea tree knife. Yeah.
All right, so the heat treatment went well, the tempering cycle went well, but it did become very evident that I hammered the billet harder on one side than the other. You could see the cladding layer right here all the way up towards the front, but the cladding layer is right here. And I ground this evenly with layout lines. Everything's nice and symmetrical, which tells me that, uh, you know, I must have, when I put the three pieces together, I must have hammered on this side more, spreading the material out on that outer layer. So then when I ground a knife blank out of it, I lost some of that um, 10 or the, the 15 and 20 layer that is laying on top. It's still cool. I'll still see some of it back here on the knife blade and that's perfectly fine. This side, you're going to get to see it all the way up. And this was my intention right there was to get that pattern all the way up between the two dissimilar metals. Let's go ahead and get this sanded out. I'm going to start this with a 220 grit, sandpaper, wet dry, and my sanding block that I made. Put some water up there. I'm just going to start going to town. Those are some pretty heavy duty scratches. Let's go back to the sander. We'll clean that up first. I don't want to hand sand that much. Finishing up the sanding on this bad boy here, and then we're going to throw it into the etchant tank and see what that pattern looks like. I've already detected several things that uh, didn't go right. The holes that I drilled were supposed to add a raindrop pattern, but I kind of drilled the holes a little too deep for the thickness of this billet. So you can still see a spot here and a spot here and a little tiny spot there from the holes. Uh, there's nothing I could do about that. The only way I could get those holes out or those spots out would be to grind the blade even farther and then the blade would be too thin for what I'm shooting for. And also, uh, my top layers of the 15 and 20 I've determined were too thin. Uh, I did a tall flat grind on this knife and it ground off most of the 15 and 20. There's a little bit left across the top of the, the knife, but I would have liked to have seen a little bit more, and I would have liked to have seen the activity between the two layers a little bit lower down on the blade. So the next one that I do, I'll use a little bit thicker outer cladding material, and uh, we'll see what that achieves. Now, this is still gonna be a really cool blade. The heat treatment went great. Uh, everything's gonna be good, and it's gonna have a cool pattern on the blade. But you know as well as I do, when you're making knives, we're in an endless effort to try to increase our success rate and make the knives more beautiful. So, you know, we take these opportunities as learning experiences, you know. I'm not an expert at forging blades. This is, this is like the uh, seventh or eighth San Mai that I've ever even made. So each time that I do it, I take notes on how I did it and what I should do different next time. And I'll tell you right now, I would have liked to have forged a thicker billet so I could have ground off more of the scale and had a little bit nicer piece of steel to work with to begin with. So this one worked out, it was okay, but I did create a little more work for myself by making the billet so thin. Um, and I also made a really thin knife out of it. This is more, this is going to be an incredible slicing knife, almost a fillet knife, but not quite long enough to be a fillet knife. So, um, you know, this is going to be a really neat knife. Definitely not your survival knife that you're going to go out and baton wood with or anything like that. This is a more delicate type knife. So I took this up to 500 grit. It's looking really nice. Everything's good. Really nice, thin blade. Let's throw it in the etch. All right, so this is my tank of ferric chloride acid. We're just gonna take this, give it a swirl in there, make sure it's all mixed up. And I also swirl it because sometimes um, it can 
knock debris off of the blade so you get a, a more even etch. The other thing that I do is I pull it out of this etchant really fast. The first time I only do about 10 or 15 seconds that I pull it out and I lightly go over it with 4 aught steel wool to kind of clean off the surface because in that initial etch, if you have any oil spots or anything like that and you etch it too long, that oil is going to resist the acid and then you're forever going to see that spot that resisted the acid. Let's see what we got. So it's etching nice and even. So I'll just let it do its thing for a little bit. Not too long, we don't want to etch it too long. Ferric chloride has a tendency to etch the 15 and 20 a little bit also. So, um, you know, I want the 15 and 20 to stay bright. So I'm only gonna etch it for a little bit and then I'm gonna clean it up and we'll probably do a coffee etch to darken the 1084. So for complete transparency, I'd like to tell you a quick story about this. I threw this in the etch and when I pulled it out, I noticed I had a whole bunch of scratches right here and right here on both sides of the knife. So I pulled it out and re-sanded it, put it in the etch, pulled it out again to find more scratches. So I sanded and then put it back in the etch to find more scratches and so on. And this took several, several attempts before I finally got all the scratches out. This knife blade is extremely hard. Uh, the core material is 1084, and uh, I tempered it on a cycle of 400 for two hours, cooled it off, and then did another 400 for two hours, but it is still ex an extremely hard steel. So I went ahead and etched it. That's, you know, I wanted to show you what it looked like out of two light etches. So all in all, after I sanded it clean and put it back in the etch, there was a about a 15 second etch in the acid and then I cleaned it off and did about another 30 second etch and that's it. That's, you know, I didn't want to darken the, the nickel steel too much, but it gave me a cool highlight. Now I'm going to go into, oh, that's not enough water. Nutso. Now I'm going to put it in this water right here. You can see in there. And I'm going to add instant coffee to do a coffee darkening on the uh, 1084 portion. And I love coffee. Let's go ahead and put uh, about that much. That ought to do it. That ought to do it. All right, we sat overnight. Oh man, that coffee worked great. Let's clean this up and see what it looks like. 